Welcome back to Washoe in Nevada for episode 5 with me, Mr. Sealy P. Right, it's 11.43 in the morning and I've got work to do. I've just been over to the quarry because I helped them out. Like I said, I'm sure they'll be more than happy to help me out. I've grabbed the um, New Holland wheel loader. I've also leased this by HJ Machine and Bow, I think it was. It's um, under wheel loaders and where are we? Get through the CSZ pack. Yeah, HJ Machine and Bow. Um, it's the double claw because we are going to be clearing some logs. I've ground out the stumps from starting the field yesterday, the two trees I cut down. But I think what I need to do, I need something a bit more heavy duty because I've got more trees to do today. I have ploughed out most of my new field, but I've left the clumps where the trees are. That's what we're doing today on the other new field, the one I started in the last episode. That has now been fertilised and it is in the process of, it might, it's probably actually been finished, of being limed. So that will need planting or seeding. So I'm trying to get a few jobs done. Oh, yeah, the store has had a grain sol or a silo put in. So for bulk buying of seed and things like that, we can come to the store and buy it from here. It's no different to buying pallets or anything else. It's just an easier way of doing it, really. So that's all very helpful. Let's get this on. Nice straight. Fairly. Fairly, fairly, fairly. Let's move that right forward. Because when the ramps go up on the back of that, they sometimes hit the back. Let's have a look. Fingers crossed they don't. There's like hidden. Nope, we're good. Fantastic. Right. So, wow, hasn't a lot happened in the last 24 hours. Um, I did a Lipinki episode yesterday. Uh, Celie G's not very well at the moment. She's not been feeling too good the past couple of days. Had a touch of the flu, bizarrely enough. Well, I say not bizarrely enough. People always assume you get colds and stuff when it's cold weather, and we're having some nice warm weather here in the UK. But, yeah, she's got, uh, got a bit of a bug. She's not feeling at all well. Hopefully today we'll get a video done. Depends how she's feeling. I don't want to push her to do one if she's not feeling very well. We'll see how we go. But yesterday, news dropped from Realismus Modding on their blog and on their website about Seasons Mod. And I know a few people have done videos on this. I'm not doing a dedicated video on it, but I thought, you know what, while I'm doing this, we'll have a bit of a chat, talk about a few things that are going on, you know. You know how it is. Crop's still going right in Field 9. Um, yes, yeah, so it is going to be available on PC and Mac on the 24th of July. Um unfortunately for consoles not yet now i'm going to say something controversial now and i know the pc guys will hate me for it and i'll get a load of grief and dislikes and all that but you know what? i don't really care um i have this thing now where if the game is multi-platform and i've having spoken to the guys at giants first hand spoken to the guys at giants about this it surprises me that they don't wait until it's compatible for all platforms then release all at once um because it just you know why wouldn't you I, I don't know I guess if it's ready on PC first and then the console stuff there's, there's a few bug fixes and stuff to do but the argument still stands it should really come out on all platforms at the same time I know that's not how the world works I, I kind of get it but it just is what it is I just thought you know, throw that in there so uh, right what we'll do let's jump in this see if I can go and grab a couple of trees on the other side I've got the chainsaw I'm just going to cut the trees down with the chainsaw I've still got the plough I leased in the last episode but what I did buy off screen is why my money's gone down to 35,000 I bought the mulcher the bio be belts by Toxicom uh, so that mulcher stump grinder it's a cool bit of kit so that's what I did the two stumps with on the other field so as you can see this field I've kind of gone round got myself an edge done most of the bulk of it but I've got these clumps of trees which need to come out so that's what we're going to be doing clearing that out and we'll hopefully get some planting done in this episode too but over on the other field, I've got the two trees that I removed. I just kind of pushed them to one side. Now this, if I... I've got to remember how to do this. One side to side. No, that was that. No. There we go. Open that right out, which means you can do longer logs without them twisting and going all horrible. All horrible, as they do. Anyway, yeah, so... Um, 
Seasons, 19. Wow, realism. I mean, they've basically written, rewritten the book. And like, I'll, I'll probably do some videos. The problem I've got is, like I say, it comes out on PC first. So the PC guys that get it first, they're going to do their videos. There's going to be tons of stuff. I will do a console version. So, you know, it's probably going to be all the same stuff. But as you can see, it will be Um I will do, but obviously it drops two days before I'm due to fly out to FarmCon <laughs> as well, which is, you know, typical. But that's on PC. I don't know what's going to come to console. So what have they done? Well, everything has been revamped. They've taken Giant's base game and just basically rewritten it. I mean, it's not rewritten it. Added to it is probably the best way of putting it. Um, it's... Actually, that actually needs to be more... Because the other tree is in the middle, isn't it? Does it really put these particularly well together? Um... So, growth now. The growth system uh, has had a revamp. <laughs> Everything has. It doesn't take ages. Um, the, it will not be the same every year. And success is not predetermined. Um, you have to look out for bad weather destroying your crops, whether it's frost or droughts. It's incredible. You need to plan a year ahead to keep your fields nutritious using crop rotation so we're going to have crop rotation is going to be in the game as well which I just I think it's phenomenal oh this thing is absolute what a beaut I'm happy with this not a fan of wheel loaders when you're doing stuff like this because of that twist and like when you do bales and things like that because you often get stuff going over face I'm not sure if that's quite central I think I've got more weight on the right hand end but once we get up this field it's a bit more level we should be right um, improved weeds. Now, I don't often run weeds, and I did wonder what was going to happen with seasons. Um, it's incredible, right? Seasons change the default behaviour of weeds by growing them slowly in patches instead of across an entire field. As you would find, you would get patches of it. Um, and they only grow in patches when the temperature is right. Uh, they will sprout all over the place with small weeds and mature when it gets warm. When it's too cold, they will start to die on their own. So when you get to that... Oh, when you get to that winter period, frosts and things of like that will kill the weeds off, which is quite helpful. Um, and they have also implemented preemptive spraying. Now loads of people said when weeds came out, and I got loads of messages when I did my videos on weeds, and it was just an absolute minefield information. People saying, oh, if you, if you pr spray before they grow, they don't grow. Rubbish, they do grow. Um, what they've done on the Seasons mod is preemptive spraying will be included. So if you do spray your field before, um, they won't grow. If they do grow, you get like emergent young weeds. Um, mechanical weeders will only remove young weeds. They don't have a preemptive function, so there's no point using a mechanical weeder. But herbicides will get rid of them if you do a preemptive spray. That's brilliant. That's absolutely fantastic. Um, we've got weather influenced growth. The three new growth states have been added planted, germinated, and germination failed. So they've added some extra ones in. Actually, I'll leave this to one side. Um, so, kind of like it was in FS17 with Seasons, if you didn't plant in the right window, or you planted when it was cold, or you, you know, often it wouldn't germinate and the, plant, the crop would fail. Depending on the weather patterns, and they will change regularly, um, they're more lifelike. It's incredible. Dry spells and frost can damage parts of your fields, so it's important to try and plant at the right time and when conditions look favourable in the weather forecast. It's possible for crops planted too late to germinate, but they will never mature. Check the season's calendar and make sure to plant crops at the correct time. Crops will have three maturity states, planted, young and mature. All crops have three resistance ratings, depending on their maturity state. Wow. A new help page has been added into the season's menu. You know what? We are going to need it. Um, it was a bit of a kind of minefield on 17. Anyway, and they have added in so much stuff. Um, it's going to take a lot of getting used to. Now I know there are going to be those professional farmers out there, those professional gamers that on the day it drops will know everything and then they, they will have known everything because they're awesome. Let's be honest, realistically most of us it's going to be... It's going to take a while to get our heads round and to do it right. That's just normal. Normal behaviour from normal people. Um, you know, you know what it's like, you know what I mean. Um, now, crop rotation. <laughs> crop rotation is the practice of growing different crops in succession that are beneficial to each other. So one crop after the next one, the previous one will help maybe leaving something in the ground and that kind of stuff, you know. Um, and there will be uh, 
different categories for crops that are beneficial to other crops or there'll be neutral ones. Some crops will be more suitable to grow several years in succession while others require to be varied on the field. It's possible to leave a field to rest and restore for a year. Fallow fields, we're gonna have fallow. So when you do crop rotation, generally speaking, you know, back in the day, in the old days, um, you might have a four field rotation and the fourth field would be left fallow. So you'd rotate round and every year one would be left fallow. Gives it a chance to kind of um, restore itself. At the end of the day, you know, the nutrients come back into the soil, it recovers, takes a breather from however many years it's been in use. Um, that's brilliant. Being able to do fallow fields and allow your fields to kind of regenerate yourself, restore, ready for putting something in. What an incredible feature to have. It's, it's, um, this is going to take the game to a whole new level. Uh, now, obviously, a lot of people don't necessarily like it. They just want to be able to plug and play and have a go and just have fun. Um, so, most common crop rotations should be possible to simulate, including the effects of double cropping. In the field HUD, you'll be able to see the crop categories of the two previously planted crops together with the rotation planner. Wow, this will be an important tool for making, uh, for planning the next crop to plant. Um, the rotation planner is a new tool specially made for players to plan the rotations ahead. It can hold four rotations, one per column, and they are saved even in multiplayer. <laughs> oh my, oh, it's incredible, right trying to read from my laptop and do this at the same time so I'm, you know, I don't want to miss anything. Oh, no, that's it. Uh, that's better. Now, weather. Weather will have ch weather is changing as well. What a surprise. The new sky and removal of the skybox system asks for a complete rewrite of the weather system with more details, variety and immersion. Of course they would do a complete rewrite. Wouldn't, why wouldn't you? Um, you know, this is really this nodding after all. You know, they... It's, no, it's not hardly surprising when people have been saying, oh, why is it not here? We've been waiting for seasons for ages. But well, there's a good reason why. There really is. Um, so, the new cloud system has been integrated with the new weather generation that allows more events every day. So you can have rain in the morning, cloud in the afternoon, thunder at night. It's all possible. So you can have a very different weather across the course of a day, which I think is absolutely brilliant. Um, wind speed and direction is now modelled. The wind speed is a key attribute to how quickly grass dries. I can't stop smiling. Uh, the income from wind turbines are also dependent on wind speed. And with very strong winds, the wind turbines will shut down. Visibly, turbines will also follow the wind direction, which is what they do in real life. They, uh, they, they turn to face whichever direction the wind's coming from. But under very strong wind conditions, they do stop because it can be dangerous for the gearboxes and things like that. Um, that's incredible. Detailed forecasts and uncertainty. The weather forecast is now much more detailed. Not only does it feature minimum temperature, average temperature and maximum, but also wind speed and probability of precipitation. Expected precipitation is also shown. As the drying of hay requires good weather, the suitability of the weather for drying grass is indicated in the forecast. More information on this feature in the below section on grass. On top of that, the next 24 hours are detailed in three-hour blocks, so you can get even more detailed information on the weather <laughs> on the weather coming up. Wow. However, the forecast is not completely certain. The further away the prediction, the more uncertain it is. A prediction of rain in five days' time may not actually happen. Um, the weather people may, don't know everything, so it's useful to check the forecast regularly. It's going to be like real farming. I mean, it's, it's insane. Absolutely. I'll tell you what they do. I'm, I'm going to talk about that in a little bit, actually. But, um... Right, so I had a panic then. I suddenly thought I hadn't, I'd missed a load of recording. I haven't. I'm all right. <laughs> I'm trying to put my uh, timer somewhere so when it goes off, it's on vibrate. The vibration is so loud, you keep hearing it on the headset. But if I put it somewhere where you can't hear it on the headset, I can't hear it, and then... I miss it going off. Anyway, continuing on. Snow and the mask. Ooh. Uh, some small changes to the season mask. Um, they nil, they're falling back on the tip collision. This has become possible with the new game engine changes. Uh, it makes it possible to have high snow even on unprepared maps. However, it's it very likely that looks bad. Okay, so the map hasn't been prepared by the map maker. You will get snow, it will work, but it won't look how it should do. Um, 
Bale rotting still requires a full, fully prepared map with a special season's mask so that every spot that is expected to cover for rotting also performs that function. Now that comes later on when we talk about grass and hay and that kind of stuff. On 17, if you left it out in the open, it would rot. If you didn't bale it, it would rot. Um, so if you put it under cover, it would be better protected, but in bales it would be even, obviously even better protected than that. So obviously what they're saying is unless the map is fully prepared with the season's mask, so all the points are shown where it needs to be. So if you put something in a barn, that barn is protected. Um, you might still get rot. So they're kind of obviously working on... I'll leave that tree where it is. This one I think will do. Um, so yeah, that's what they're working on. Placeables from the base game have received their own masking area so they fit better. Map makers likely need to do this as well to further improve maps for snow. So it may well be a case. Some map makers will, some probably won't. So on pre-existing maps it might well be that map makers won't actually go in and um, and change anything. They might just leave it as it is. Uh, I don't know. I mean, it depends, it depends on the map maker and what they're prepared to do. Look at this clear. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Look at him there. Um, yeah, so, that snow mask, animals, wow, this is where it all gets really rather exciting. Animal system has received a complete overhaul with new complexities and more depth. The age, weight and gender of each animal you own is now simulated. <laughs> um, food intake, wow, this is incredible. Food intake, actually if I just chop that bit off about there. No, it's going for the wrong tree, isn't it? That might work. Uh, got one over here as well. Um, so yeah, food intake for, to intake for each animal depends on their age and weight. Um, weight gain also depends on their age and weight and on when what they are fed. To maximise weight gain, the best feed has to be provided. Cattle can produce either manure or slurry but not both. What they produce depends on whether they have straw. This aligns better with how real farms are run. Not using straw will cause a slight decrease in productivity, but slurry is much easier to handle and worth more to a farmer than manure. Wow, okay. Um, what else have we got? Care for the health of animals has become of utter importance. Keeping them overnight in a trailer will kill the animals. Uh, due to the fact they have a lack of water, food, and movement. Why is this not? Okay, that's weird. Why is that not? Why just at a funny angle? There we go. Um, what else have we got? Hens lay eggs. To get chicks, you get a rooster. The ideal is one rooster per eight hens. The chance of breeding decreases with less roosters. <laughs> if there's no brooding, there's no eggs. Wow. Well, it must be breeding, surely. Brooding? Well, maybe. Um, raising animals for meat production is now possible. As animals gain weight and, and age, their growth rate decreases. Um, while feed intake generally follows weight, the key to maximising profit is to find the balance point between optimal weight and age of the animals. Price per kilogram is higher for younger animals and weight gain. Sorry, and weight gain will slow down as the animal ages. Um, so you'll be able to have, and this is the next bit, breeds. You'll be able to have cows for either meat or milk. So you can have dairy cows. Oh, I still can't believe I'm saying it out loud. Dairy cows or cows for meat. It's incredible. Um, Scene since 19 includes life animal, real life animal breeds and each breed has its purpose. Some breeds are meant for meat production while others are specific breeds for milk, wool and egg production. For instance, cattle is now going to be divided into five breeds. Uh, limousine or limousine is it? Limousine? Sailor, Holstein, Ayrshire and Brahman. These are all different. 
Uh, limousine, Sailor and Brahmin are meat breeds, so steers are bought at 300 kilogram weight for fattening. They have different price and weight gains. Holstein or Holstein and Ayrshire are meant for dairy operations. Um, so two-year-old heifers are available for purchase. Their milk output will follow lactation cycles. Um, the mod assumes artificial insemination is carried out and that 14 month gestation cycle is followed. The other animals have similar uh, characteristics to create a more varied, realistic and interesting animal gameplay. Of course they do. I'm just thinking, I'm not going to get through this in the time I might have. Come on, quick, quick, quick. I've got lots to do. What I'm going to do, I'm going to cut the rest of these down. Because I need to go to the next task, I need to do the stump grinds, I need to move the trees, there's loads I need to do. And I'm kind of, I wanted to chat about all the stuff, but I want to get it right, that's why I'm going from the actual uh, blog. But I'm taking too long to cut these down, I need to get this done. So we'll get back onto that in just a moment. Right, onto the stump grinding. Got the mulch up. And it's just a case of going over the stumps and chopping it down, really. Um, just, I've done three or four already. And then we'll clear the trees, then we'll get the rest sorted, then I'll get it fertilised. Just put that there. great thing with having a high horsepower tractor is when you use a lower horsepower tractor, the mulcher takes quite a lot of horsepower to run. And the tractor kind of grinds to a halt, but having a higher horsepower tractor means you can still manoeuvre around it's not too much of a problem. Let's put that on. Fantastic. I've got to make sure I don't miss any, because that can cause real problems when you come to plough, obviously. So, on to horses then, on Seasons. What's happening with now? You might not be interested in Seasons whatsoever. You might not have any intention of running it. I think it's going to be incredible and it's going to make such a huge difference. Um, so, horses have received a special treatment. They've redesigned them into a different type of gameplay. A livery stable. The game... Oh, that's clever. The gameplay tries to emulate a farm that provides housing and basic care for a horse owner. Okay. A horse can be brought to the farm in exchange of no money. It has to be fed, cleaned and ridden every day. Depending on how much care it gets, an income is provided every day by the owner. Some breeds require more riding to earn the same amount of money as other breeds. Oh, okay, sorry. Some breeds require more riding to earn the same amount of other, as other breeds. Horses also provide more money when they are very fit. This all comes at a higher risk though. An unhealthy animal can die. This will cost quite a bit of money as repayment to the owner. Wow, so it's kind of like a you get fined. Well, I suppose you would do, wouldn't you, if you've, you know, for all intents and purposes, killed someone's animal. That's quite scary. Um, right, grazing. This is incredible. The grazing mod from Farming Simulator 17 has been integrated directly into Seasons 19. Uh, so animals... Animals in pens that have grass will consume the grass as replacement for the grass in a trough. Be careful, as the grass in a pen can be completely eaten. This depends on the size of the pen, the amount of animals and the time of year. Um, the changes of the animal pens into placeables that plant their own grass, together with more engine changes, allow for automatic detection of the grass. No map changes are required. The only requirement is that the animal pen has grass in the first place. 
um, so the animals will eat the grass in the pen first before going on to what's in the trough obviously in the winter when the grass doesn't grow you're going to need to make sure they've got it in their trough but that's that's clever because that's one of the things we've always said with sheep and stuff like that if they're in a field with grass why are we feeding them grass it kind of that is a weird situation but this kind of counters that uh, right water pump huh. animals require a lot of attention okay. um, daily feeding daily watering maybe even daily riding the water requirements of the animals have been corrected to be more realistic to standards to make it easier for players to have water in the troughs a new water pump can be placed near the animal pen it will automatically keep the water level of the water troughs at a minimum of 15 percent the water cost is subtracted from your account okay interesting developments next one better grass handling mm. so better grass handling <laughs> I'm a little bit in awe of what they're doing what they've done the many engine script changes in farms from 18 19 allow for many new features and this is something we thought I talked with giants about when I was there for my uh, caster training in Berlin um, and there are quite a few things that were scripts before which are now in the base game coding which means that map makers and stuff can take advantage of that fact that there are things that are now kind of more integrated which is, which is a clever way of doing it um, two of these are multi-step grass drying and improved rotting a new multi-step drying process has been added to create hay when cutting wet grass it needs to be tedded uh, which we kind of do anyway but it's just as a standard to make hay afterwards it needs to dry in the sun to become hay when cutting dry low mo moisture grass it does not need tedding but it still needs to dry this means that making hay now depends on the weather good planning is required the more detailed forecast will certainly help here if hay is left in the rain it will turn wet again wow. um, and afterwards it will start to rot freshly mown wet grass will not rot before the second night after mowing Crikey. Hay and straw rots when kept outside in the rain, however straw and hay heaps inside buildings will not rot anymore, like was the case in season 17. Grass still always rots as this material is wet. With the new drying system described above, it will take two days instead of one for the rotting to start on grass heaps. That's quite good because within when it used to hit midnight, you'd lose like 50% of it. I think that's all the stumps done. Turn it off. And to collect all the eyes up. Um, that's incredible. It just when you just think of the concept alone, just of bringing that into the game is an, an amazing achievement. Anyway, right, uh, logs. So, on top of all of that, if that's not enough, improved visuals and audio. Seasons 19 has received a new system for tree visuals, custom shaders. Together with Giants, the team has created new shaders and special custom textures. The trees now gradually change their looks instead of the sudden colour switch as you went through the seasons. Uh, the leaves grow in spring until fully grown in summer, after which they will brown for autumn. The colour of the tree depends on the time of year, the tree, and on the weather. The lighting of seasons has been rewritten to fully fit the new lighting system from 18 to 19. Um, it removes the moon in favour of darker nights and improves the dawn and dusk lighting wow uh, the amount of daylight depends on the time of year and the location of the geo now if you're not if you've never done this before you don't know what it's all about the geo is basically a place so place it changes the season settings depending on where in the world you are so you'll have a map and then that map can then have a geo that goes with it for seasons so depending on where you are in the world the weather patterns and everything will be more realistic to that part of the world rather than it just being a kind of you know this is seasons away you go um that changes things massively as as it did on 17 the geos are incredible it's a brilliant idea a bit Um, where are we? The new weather system fully integrates with the new cloud system. A varying amount of clouds are shown throughout the day and will move with the wind direction. With these changes, the weather during the night is finally working well. On top of the cloud system, seasons add to the new weather event, storms. Storms pr uh, produce thunder and occasional lightning effects will light up your fields. 
I'm sorry, I'm trying to get my head around that. Wow, okay. Uh, I'll do these two around the other way. <gasps> too fast, too fast. Too fast and too bumpy. Right, let's put in that down about there. So one end now, I think. Move it into the middle a bit more. This log grab now. It's just like a double version of the one we had before, but wow. What a bit of kit. Ah, oh, so I missed that last log, isn't it? Unless I can push it up against something. Oh, let's try that now. Nope, she doesn't grab it. Ah, oh, that's annoying. That's better, try that. There we go. Nice, okay. Don't think I'm going to get lucky enough to do more than four because it will splay them out all over the place, but I'll put those over here out of the way. Um, right, what else have we got? Sorry, I know I keep stop starting. I'm trying to trying to get an immersive ambient sound system. Sit down. <laughs> I'm just kind of glancing down and reading this as I'm driving forward. Um, Seasons replaces the wind and rain sounds of the base game with a new system. Yes, well, you know, of course. Why don't giants employ release as modern? Um, the new system ties in tightly with the visuals. It's, it is possible to hear how fast the wind is blowing or how heavy it rains or hails. A large set of sounds is being mixed in real time to create the desired effects both inside the vehicle and outside. A new set of flags is added to the map sound system to allow for quiet birds in the winter. What? That's bonkers. Okay, well. <laughs> oh dear. Oh, I wonder if I'll stop smiling today. Oh, this is an incredible when it comes to console. Just wow. I, I, I'm assuming the point is they're trying to make sure that all of it does. They want to make sure that, that we get as much as we possibly can. And I get that. I really do. That's fantastic. So, the last thing on here. Adjusted vehicle maintenance and repair. This is also very, very cool. Let's go back for that in a minute. I think what I'll probably do is the same on here. Let's get this uh, done. So I'm going to clear the rest of these up. And then we'll... Um, Come back and get into the next stage would be the ploughing, I think. Come on. I'll try and back to the stop. Can you get the nudge on that? Go on, there we go. Just needs a bit of assistance, that's all.
Okay, that's the last of them. I think that's the last of them. That grab is nice, I like that. I think I'm going to be using that a lot more. Right, let's stop that there. Right, because I'm going to need, I'm going to have to need, I'm going to probably need to use that to load up whatever I decide to put it in. Right, let's swap over then and put the uh, plow on the John Deere. Fantastic. Now, the last little bit which I started, adjusted vehicle maintenance and repair. This seems like a while, but it hasn't been for you, but for me it has. So, they've replaced Seasons Repair System for the Base Game 19 Repair. Um, they've added new algorithms for sell and repair prices, which is quite cool. Um, also, they've separated, this is great, the scratches, visible wear, from the vehicle repair. Another amazing feature to improve the performance of your vehicle you can repair it of course you can but you can leave it covered in scratches and dings and all the rest of it uh, this needs to be put on to allow create fields drop it down and hopefully I won't hit any stumps um, so to make the vehicle nice and shiny again you will need to repaint the vehicle so if you want to get rid of those scratches and dings and dents, you repaint it. Uh, this is costly, depending on the size and complexity of the machine. So, I suppose, just like in real life, and that's what's fantastic. If your machine gets dinged and dented and a little bit, you know, scratched and whatever, are you really going to pay for it to be completely resprayed and repainted? Or are you just going to keep maintaining your vehicle and keep plodding away? But that's great, because over time those dings and dents and stuff don't affect the wear and tear of the vehicle they're not going to affect its running or anything that it needs to do um, I think that's an incredible feature so that's it I mean that's all of the features pretty much um, I'm sure things will be tweaked there'll be more stuff they are releasing July 24th 2019 for PC and Mac and then it says how about console well we need to make sure the mod is complete this is an interesting one and it's kind of almost like PC and Mac are being used although they get it early as a kind of beta testing, beta testing, oh, beta testing, but um, a kind of live beta test really. Um, we need to make sure the mod is complete and bug free. After that they'll go through a final QA process with Giants and then it will be put onto console. Help us out by reporting any bugs. So that's, I mean, there's so much in there and I know I've kind of waffled on and I was kind of stopping what I was doing and stop starting, stop starting, but there is so much that's going to change the game. I mean, you know, if they turn around, if somebody turns around and said, I've done a mod that um, changes the way you actually do grass now, so you need to actually TED and leave it, and people will be, because that's incredible, it's amazing. That's just one minor part of all the changes they've made. That's mind boggling. But there you go. Quite exciting, too. I'm nearly there. I can't believe them. Actually, no, no. Oh, I missed a bit. I shouldn't back up with my plough, but we we'll get this fertilised. We'll get it limed, and then we can get on with planting both of them. At some point, my other field nine will be ready to harvest. I have had a call. I do need to do a water run to the livestock market. They need water for the livestock they haven't sold yet, so I'll do that at some point. Fuel runs, I'm going to limit myself to one a day. I say one a day, like one each. One to the quarry and one to Area 51. Area 51 has generators and all sorts of stuff and they uh, they require topping up regularly. So they'll get a run every day and probably so will the quarry. Maybe not every day, I don't know. We'll see. I'm not going to be doing like 20 runs in a day. That's ludicrous unless they decide they need to store fuel for an impending apocalypse or something like that in which case maybe but then my improved finances will do me no good whatsoever in an apocalypse type situation
enjoying this map. Not having it a tree stump yet, so obviously done something right. So different once the trees and these patches are gone. I do like the fact that Jimmy always has that stuff in his maps that a bit of actually might do the same kind of thing. What did the actual bushes and stuff go when you're plowing them out? So that's always good. Right, so what I'm going to do now then, I'm going to finish off these two patches and then we'll, uh, we'll get on with fertilising it and then we'll line it I might have to do the seeding in the next episode I'm thinking and we'll get rid of, get rid of those logs too because there are some other logs I can get rid of as well in the process so we'll lease a log trailer put it on the back of the semi and then we'll um, we'll do that Right, ploughing's done. What I thought I would do is do the liming first. It doesn't make any difference what way around it goes. Do the lime first and then fertiliser over the lime. That really doesn't make a lot of difference. Only that. I'm just saying, else. I can't really use the chunk here, can I? I might have enough in the rear tank to start off. And I think that actually the lime's going to run out in a minute. Put that down. Let's move that front tank out the way first. Actually, not what I need to do. Let's move this. Whoa. I'll do. Is it going to run out? Is it going to run out? Probably. Missed. Tank is empty. How jolly helpful. Right, so what I will do then. How much have I got in that? 1300. That'll get me started. Is it going to miss some? Probably. Right, okay, so while that's spraying then... Oh, that's odd. Yep. Yeah. Let's come over that way a little bit. Let's try that again. I might need to get rid of some of these trees around the edges. It depends if the workers recognise them and decide they're going to stop working. Potentially. Right, let's get out of the way of that. And I will now go and carry on getting some more lime. It's just a couple of patches, but it's nothing too bad. Right, well, there we go. I think we have cleared the field. Took a little while, but we got there. We are now liming and fertilising, which means we'll be able to get the seeding done. But I said that may well be the next episode now. 
I apologise again. I know I've already apologised, but for the sort of stop starting, I wanted to talk about the new seasons mod that's you know, imminent, but um, I didn't want to just do an episode like a video on that. I just thought you know while I'm doing a bit of farming, but obviously then I was trying to look at two different screens at the same time, which becomes a little bit trickier to do. Um, right, well, let's get some fertiliser in this. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Um, I hope you found it useful and informative in some way, shape or form. I normally do that with my, uh, my Guide 2 videos. If you have, give us a like. If you don't subscribe yet, please do. If you want to leave a comment, feel free. And if you want to share this video, then please be my guest. Whatever you should choose to do. Thanks for watching. <laughs>